from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. <clears throat> Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Friday, August 26, 2016, when I'm recording this show. And it is 4.10 p.m. And this is day 23 of the Dog Days of Podcasting, where I attempt to do a show a day for 30 days. Me, along with other with uh, approximately, well, according to Chiaki, it changes every day, but I'm a, uh, several other podcast nerds, including me. We do a show a day for 30 days, and this is day 23. I am in my car. I'm using Boss Dog. I'm actually finding that it's easier to, if I'm not playing an audio comment or uh, drinking beer, it's easier to do a show on Boss Job because with my computer is so slow and it just takes me forever to, to put things together and to convert it and all that. It's easier to do it on Boss Job, so I figured I would uh, do today's show while I'm coming back from the Home Depot. The reason I went to Home Depot is because this morning when I got up, I got I get up at 5.30 every morning, by the way. I'm a little bit tired, but I wasn't tired when I got up this morning. I went to bed at around probably around 12.30 a.m. I went to see The Living Inn last night and it was such a great show. It is one of the best shows I have been to in a long, long time. And when, I, when I'm out late, I usually can't stay up past like 8.30. I'm getting to be an old man in life. At 8.30, I'm just, I'm just zonking out. But, uh, so when I go out to a show, Normally, if I get up at 5.30 in the morning, I'm just flat out wiped out. But last night, the show was so good, I woke up this morning excited just because the show was so good and inspiring. It just made me excited to take on the day. So when I got up at 5.30 this morning, like I usually do, I get up and I go start the coffee maker. And, and I, I did that this morning and I was starting the coffee maker. I, I was standing next to the uh, counter in my kitchen and a rat about nine inches long, not including the tail, ran across my feet. I mean, he just walked right across my feet. I didn't know what it was, but once I, and it re- walked across my street and across my feet and went into the dishwasher, like underneath the dishwasher, and I went, ah! and everybody in the house ran upstairs. What's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay? They thought I fell, and I flipped. I was just freaked out. I have never, never seen a rat that big in my house before. I've seen mice, and in my office where I record my show, you can hear. Uh, well, for the past like two weeks, I've been hearing these scratching noises in my wall, and I knew it was like a mile, either a raccoon or, or mice or rats. And now I know it's rats because this rat was huge. It walked across my feet. And man, that scared the living shit out of me. And three days ago, we, I found mouse droppings in the dining room. And our house is pretty clean, especially when we have the house cleaner come on Wednesday. But the house, the day after the house cleaner came, we found mouse droppings. And so I put a bunch of mouse traps underneath the underneath the, uh, where I found the mouse droppings. The mouse traps are still there, full of dog food. I put dog food because they had been eating the dog food. That's what attracted them because there was dog food on the floor the night before and now and then there was no dog food. So those mouse traps didn't work. So I thought, okay, maybe the mice saw the traps and they decided to leave. Well, um, apparently they went to get their, the king of their colony and he was not afraid. Maybe he was afraid of me, but he walked right across my feet. So I went to Home Depot to buy every kind of mouse trap I could find except for the electronic zappers because they're $50 a piece and I can't afford to spend $300 on several zapper traps. So I got a bunch of glue traps, which I know are inhumane, but at this point, fuck them, man. They can, they can just glue themselves and we'll, we'll beat them to death or something. And I also got some regular old school traps like the wooden ones, bigger than the mouse traps. So I'm gonna lay a bunch of those out tonight. <sighs> That's what I went to Home Depot for. Tomorrow morning, I'm getting up. It's I'm leaving the house at like 7 a.m. It's my brother-in-law's. Well, I'm I'm cooking 
crawfish. I'm hosting a crawfish boil. He got a hundred pounds of crawfish. He has a his place. They have a an annual um, party and the end of summer party. And every year they have a theme. Last year the theme was I think carnival food and stuff. And my Ben Featherwitch played. Well, this year the theme is Mardi Gras or New Orleans. So he's having a gumbo cook-off, they're going to have jambalaya, there's going to be a zydeco ban, and he got a hundred pounds of live crawfish, and he asked me if I would like to cook the crawfish. Pardon me, I'm going to take a sip of this fine water. Ah! Twelfth one of the day, always the best. So he asked me to cook the crawfish, and he got a hundred pounds. I have cooked crawfish for myself, but I usually get like three pounds. Never cooked a hundred pounds of crawfish and I am both excited to be cooking that much crawfish but I'm also terrified because I don't want to ruin a hundred pounds of crawfish and I've been watching videos and looking online. If anybody knows how to cook a hundred pounds of crawfish the right way, let me know. But I found one video where they were only, they cooked about probably 40 pounds of crawfish and they took a bunch of crawfish boil like one package of crawfish like a four pound package of Zatarain crawfish boil and they cut up some onions they like just cut onions in half and threw those in there about a dozen lemons threw that in the big pot it's like an 80 quart pot with a strainer in it they did this outside and they put uh, a bunch of sausage in and, and red potatoes and they started and got it all going. I think they put some celery salt in it as well, but I don't know, I'm probably going to omit that. And once they got it boiling, they dumped the crawfish in and turned it off. And then you wait until you stir it. You have a big paddle stirrer and you wait until the crawfish are the exact right tenderness or the right consistency. They say if it's too rubbery you didn't cook them enough and if it's falling apart you cooked them too long. So you got to do it just right. So you have to man the thing and keep stirring and once you turn it off then you put the corn on the cob in because they don't want they say you shouldn't overcook the corn and then it'll get all the absorb all of the spices from the uh, crawfish boil spice thing and you'll ruin and you'll the the spices will overpower the corn. So that's how I'm planning on doing it. If anybody knows a better way to do it, uh, please let me know before 7 a.m. tomorrow. I know that's short notice, but that's how I'm planning on doing it. I'm really, really looking forward to eating some good Cajun food, man. The Zydeco band's gonna be there. I'm gonna, I'm getting there, I'm leaving early because the Petaluma traffic is just brutal, man. So I'm gonna try to beat the traffic and then I'm just gonna, take it easy at my brother-in-law's and probably start cooking the crawfish around I don't know about nine or ten at least getting the ingredients ready it's gonna be a fun day I think and after that I have a feather witch gig which we go on at 8 30 p.m. because everybody in feather witch doesn't want to play late we had our choice of where we wanted to be on the bill and we chose 8 30 because most of the people that go to Featherwood shows don't really want to stay out that late either. They're usually uh, uh, women who are over 30, let's put it that way. But they're all, all gorgeous women. So that is the plan tomorrow. I'm going to load my gear up and I'm going to load the Yeti, uh, the big, uh, I just cut this person off. I'm going to load the big Yeti cooler with into the car, probably have my gear in the car with me as well and my guitars. Go to my brother-in-law's, cook 100 pounds of crawfish, eat at least 10 pounds of those crawfish myself. Some andouille sausage, some corn, some white, some red potatoes. Oh man, I can, I can just taste it right now. All right, well that is today's show. Just thought I would give you an update. In honor of 
my friends who are living in my walls and crawling across my feet. I'm going to play a little Aerosmith. We will talk to you tomorrow, friends. Find the show at rockandrollgeek.com. Send me an audio comment, area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. Or send me an MP3 to rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. I have a couple of audio comments still to play. So please keep them coming. I'll play them on the Dog Days of Podcasting. On Sunday, I'm going to go see Degeneration. I'll talk about that another time. Again, that Living End show was so good. If they come to your town while they are in the United States, go. It is a blast. I posted a couple of videos on the Facebook last night at the show. I got in free. I got a, a press pass. So he said, send me videos and photos by tomorrow. So I did. Such a good time. All right, that's enough of me. Find me on the Facebook r and Geek. Find me on the Twitter r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. Thank you, everybody who donated to the show. I will say your names on the next full episode of the Rock and Roll Geek Show, which will be very soon. Here's Aerosmith. We will talk to you tomorrow, friends.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck.